It's always fun to say, joined now by the President of the United States, Donald Trump. President Trump, appreciate you joining us. You're going to be watching the U.S. Open at all? Have you played winged foot before? I, uh, I'm actually a member of winged foot. Well, I, that's I've a pretty played good deal. Many times. It's a great place, great uh, course, and a great place. What do you think? Will the score of the winner at the U.S. Open, given how challenging those conditions are, last time it was plus five, do you think someone will go under par, or do you think I it'll be think an over so, par? I think so, because the players are so good and they're so deep. So you would think so. It was one of the higher scores. I guess that's right. It was plus five, which you don't see anymore. So let's see. I mean, between the players and technology and everything else, but Wingfoot's great and the rough is very tough looking. If they hit the fairway, they'll be okay. If they don't, they're going to be in big trouble. But uh, it's going to be a great open. What's the best score you ever had in a round? You're a member there. What's the best you've ever done? At Wingfoot, I'd say low 70s, quite a bit. Low 70s would be what I, uh, what it, you know, I've been a member there a long time. And uh, I could, I could get, it. I could do pretty well, but uh, it's, uh, but it is just a great, it's a great place. It's a wonderful place. I've, I've enjoyed it for a long time. You've played with a lot of the top golfers in the world, many of whom will be playing at Winged Foot. Right. What's one of the most fun rounds you've had with a Tiger Woods or a Rory McIlroy, and what's that experience like getting to play with a top golfer as a president? Well, the experience is terrible because you realize how bad you are. You know, there, <laughs> there is a big difference. I mean, you can be a good golfer, and when you play with these top people, even anybody on tour, I always say if there's anybody on tour, even somebody that you've never, never heard of, I have a little expression, you know, on the uh, first tee, always take the tour player, always, because they're really good and uh, they're, they're better. You know, it's very hard to get on tour. It's very hard to stay on tour. So if you have the option – Always take Clay, the tour player. You'll very rarely do badly. I found that over the years. You've played a lot of golf over the years. But, you know, I, I'm not very good. I'm an awful golfer. But every now and then you have a good round going and somebody sees right. you and, like, they pull you up and they say, hey, you can play through. And, you know, you get nervous because you're like, if you get called up to get played through, you don't want to shank one. You don't want to hit a bad shot. When right. you're playing with the Tiger Woods or Rory McIlroy, even as often as you have played, do you get nervous in the tee box teeing off with them? Yeah, I think a little bit, but you know, you're always a little bit nervous when you're in something. It depends. I think the most nervous you get in golf is when you play in the club championships. That's our major, okay? A yes. Club, you know, without strokes or anything. When you're playing in a club championship, to me, I think that's the most. I have friends that are very, very good golfers, scratch players, and they almost can't play in a club championship. They don't play well, and and uh, they just can't do it. It's the pressure, and. I have I I've, I've had a lot of a lot of friends that just can't do it. I think that's our that's our major, right? And yes. that's like a big deal. But you certainly get a little nervous. I play with Tiger a lot actually. He's a great guy. Really a great guy. And uh, it was amazing that he won the Masters so recently and and you know, was, to me it was one of the great achievements. But he's he's a wonderful person actually. People don't know him. Uh, they're all good. You know, it's interesting. When I play with golfers, I find them all to be very high quality. It's I very rarely play with a tour player or something that that you don't like. I just find them to be very nicely. Now, nice. Now, uh, you know, they're playing with the president, so perhaps they're on good behavior. I don't know. But I've but this was before I became president. I just find golfers to be a very high quality group of people you ever I've played a few pro-ams and you know they announce your name and you come right. up and you take a practice swing and there's people lined up and I always think I just don't want to kill someone you know by shanking one with people lined up really close to you you ever hit somebody and have to sign a uh, a, a golf you know like uh, they, they always sign the golf uh, gloves you know if you hit somebody down there you ever had a bad pro-am experience no I've had bad experiences but not hitting people <laughs> I've had bad because I'll play badly or something yes but uh, not for hitting people Pro-ams are okay because usually you have three or four amateurs and the pro, and there's always somebody to lift you up, right, if you're not playing well. But uh, but pro-ams are great. They're a lot of fun. But, no, Gerald Ford was famous for hitting yes. people, right? That's right. He That's was, exactly right. I don't right. know what happened. He would always, every time he played, he, he had a uh, – 
he had a propensity for saying to do. He's actually a good athlete. I don't know if he was a good golfer, but he was a very good athlete. But he had a tendency to do that. It's an easy transition there because Gerald Ford was a huge University of Michigan fan. Like he would right. have them play uh, Hell to the Victors, I think, instead of Hell to the Chief a lot of times yeah, right. uh, when he would walk around because he was such a big Wolverine fan. Uh, right. You have been instrumental and your administration has been instrumental in helping to get Big Ten football back. Tell me uh-huh. about your call with Karen, uh, Kevin Warren, what the experience was like to help to make what became yesterday a reality. All these kids, all these schools, all these athletes, not just football, a lot of people not talking about it, but fall sports in the Big Ten back and able to now play. How proud of you are uh, of, of that accomplishment and what went into it? Well, I'm really proud of it because it was dead. It was totally dead. And I told my people, look, we got a call. I say, who am I going to call? Who's the head of it? And it was Kevin Warren, who who really turned out to be very open about it. And I said, Kevin, look, we'll help you with testing. We'll help you. We'll get you everything that you need. But you got to get it back for those states. Those states want it. They're real football states, as you can understand. And, you know, great teams and very unfair to players. It may be their last chance to show their you know, their skills to the NFL, and so they wouldn't get that. And uh, I'll tell you, a group of people came together so fast once we started it because they they sort of gave up, although I I will tell you who didn't give up. The parents didn't give up and the players didn't give up. They just wanted to play, and enough with this stuff. And I called Kevin. He was open to it. We started talking real fast and hard, and uh, they ended up, it culminated in getting it done. And we, we, I have somebody, Tim Pataki, who did a really fantastic job, a young guy who works at the White House. He did a great job. He really did that full time. Now we're going to work on Pac-12. I mean, there's no reason why they shouldn't be playing. Now they're the only ones or just about, and they should be playing. Now, maybe you can't. I don't know. I mean, maybe you can't at this point. It's getting a little bit late, but they should be playing football. It's ridiculous. Uh, they may have a problem with their venues who knows you know and some of them have a problem with governors the governors had to come together and we had some governors that are democrats and uh wasn't easy but we got it we got it done and uh you've got you can have some great football big 10 football it's it's really terrific We're talking to the president of the United States, uh, Donald Trump, and I know, uh, based on my background uh, interacting with him, Tim Pataki did an incredible job, who you just gave a shout-out. He's an Ohio State grad. Over 300 calls, because some people out there, you know how it goes, and the media are going to say, oh, the White House had nothing to do with this. They had no impact. You guys were very helpful and impactful in making this a reality. I know that personally, but certainly the evidence reflects how hard Tim Pataki worked and other members of your administration. And I understand now there has been contact between the White House and the Pac-12 to also offer the same amount of help if the Pac-12 needs any assistance in order to be able to play this fall. Well, they, I can tell you, Big Ten just needed some confidence in it and some backing, but we really were given a lot of backing. No, without us, I'm not saying this for any reason. It, it was a terrible thing. You know, we did it. We absolutely did it. If we didn't get involved, you wouldn't even be talking about uh, Big Ten right now. You, they had no chance of playing. They weren't going to play. And as soon as we did it for political reasons, a couple of people said, oh, they had nothing to do with it. They had nothing to do And I'll tell you when I don't have something to do. Sometimes I get credit for something I shouldn't, in all fairness. That's okay, too. I'll take it. But in this case, uh, we, we, I mean, Tim and his whole group and and me made a lot of calls to a lot of people to get this thing done. And it's sort of sad when you do something and then you have a Democrat or, or, you know, opponent saying, well, they had nothing to do. And they know it's not true. We got it going. We got it started. We were able to show them. Uh, the different testings, and they they knew a lot about the testing anyway, but they just decided to go closed, and it was just not a good decision. And uh, and Kevin Warren did a fantastic job, by the way, gave him a lot of credit. He got out, and he just they just did a big reversal, and it's hard to do a reversal. You know, you make a decision, and now you have to say the decision we're going to change. So it's hard, it's really a hard thing to do. But uh, Kevin was fantastic, and some of the people we worked with were great, but. No, we got that one open, and we're going to try and we're going to see what we can do. I hear there's a little flexibility at Pac-12, so I don't want to get people's hopes up too high, but there's a little bit of flexibility there. We'll see if we can do it. Uh, When you look at uh, the decisions that are being made in general, like Joe Biden ran television advertisements blaming you, I think it was in Michigan, Wisconsin, uh, and Pennsylvania, for there not being Big Ten football. Do you think that he will apologize now that you've helped to make Big Ten football a reality, maybe start running ads praising you? Well, they did worse ads. They did ads that I said horrible things about 
soldiers yeah. who had died. And uh, that turned out to be a totally false story. It was made up. It's called disinformation, if you know what that is in the sports world. They made up a lie and they went with it. It's a disgusting. That was worse. But, you know, with uh, and that was a, just a terrible thing to do. That's a real these are real low lives. That's why I take off the gloves, because, you know, Joe is not equipped, be, mentally equipped to be president. That I can tell you right now. He wasn't 25 years ago. But, you know, I figure I can take the gloves off because when they did that. But they also did it in football. I, I hear somebody said, gee, it's too bad about football. I thought you liked football. I said, sure, I do. Why? They're taking ads in very important states. You know, when, you, when you're talking about the states you mentioned, they're very important states, big, powerful swing states. And uh, he's taking ads, and it's your fault that, that Big Ten isn't opened. I said, you've got to be kidding. And I put very light pressure on Big Ten even before I started this heavy pressure stuff. And I said, you've got to be kidding. I got a hold of the ad. And I said, what a lie. It's just a lie. And they do it was a lie. They made it up. They make up stories. The worst campaign, most dishonest campaign I've ever seen. And the ballot sending, where do you see that, these unsolicited ballots? Where do you see the mess that they want? They want it to be a mess. It's the only way they're going to win. It's the only way they can win is to cheat, in my opinion. So uh, that's how, that sounds, uh, see, football's a much nicer, a much more genteel sport than politics, I can tell you. But I, I really believe that they want to do this. I know they want to do. They want to make it a mess. But what happened, I saw the ad, and that's actually what got me into gear. Because I said, oh, wait a minute, I want it to happen, but I really didn't think about getting involved. When I saw the ad, I said, let's get involved and get it open. So that ad is one of the reasons I got it open, because I just wanted to show that this was that, – that was such a dirty thing to do. And uh, when everyone – I was publicly on record, as you know, Clay, saying, you know, you guys ought to get to play. And, but it was just, You said it on my show. That's when yeah, I saw I those ads. My wife, that, who, who yeah, doesn't absolutely. even pay much attention to politics, she said, wait a minute, the president came on your show last month before the Big Ten and the Pac-12 shut down – and said right. it would be a tragic mistake if they didn't play, and then they blamed Absolutely. you for the for the games not being played. Absolutely, it's a hundred percent. And tell your wife I appreciate her good memory because some people <laughs> don't remember so well. Your wife has the memory. You probably don't remember it, and she does. It's the way you're married. Well, right? you, yeah, you know how marriage goes. She remembers that's everything what, I've ever that's done. That's not happened. perfect. Uh, and by but the way, it was, I wanted it to was say- such a bad. It was so egregious, and it was terrible. And because of that, I actually activated and and we got it done. So I'm very happy. A lot of people are really happy about it. I uh, I, I was going to tell you this last time when you came on, but uh, you came on in August, and my nine-year-old son, when I said, hey, you know, the president's going to come on Dad's radio show, I swear to God, uh, President Trump, the first thing he said was, wow, he knows Vince McMahon. I, 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 that was his reaction when the president's going to come on the radio show. That's He's funny. such a WWE fan, That's but his great. first reaction. Well, uh, so I do you know him. He's great. You Actually, sh- Vince is great. Yeah, you can share that with Vince, that the first thought from my nine-year-old. Um, when you uh, when you look, you, you mentioned uh, Joe Biden in, in the debate over Big Ten football and everything else. How excited are you? It, it's like a big sporting event for many people uh, right. on September 29th when the first debate happens. Are you prepping? How do you get ready? It's almost like a sporting event, right? Debate is considered in many schools yeah. to be a sport. How do you prep? Who's playing the role of Joe Biden in the White House? What's that experience like, and how is it different to be prepping as a president as opposed to a contender when you were doing it last time against Hillary? Well, I think in many ways it could be easier, but they'll make up stories like they did about Big Ten and other things. And, you know, they, they can hit you with different kinds of things. But we've done so well. I mean, until this pandemic came in, we had the greatest economy in the history of our country. And now we're building it back to a point where we're going to have it again. All the states that you just mentioned had the best economy they've ever had last year. And now it's heading back to that again. You know, the stock market's doing great. A lot of things are doing great. And uh, we are and we have vaccines coming very shortly. I mean, literally in a matter of weeks, we're going to have vaccines coming. So I, I really think that uh, I think I think it would be a little bit easier. I think he, I can't tell you who's going to show up with Joe because I've seen him where he's grossly incompetent. And I've seen, seen him where he's sort of normal, like against Bernie. He debated normally. I don't know what he did, but he debated normally. But I've watched some of the other debates where he had the large number of Democrats and I mean, he couldn't he couldn't put three words together. It was terrible. So I don't know. You know, I don't know who's going to show up. 
do you I saw where you said you would show up for Joe Rogan if he did a he suggested a four hour debate between you and Joe Biden. How do you think it would go if Joe Biden and you showed up for a four hour debate with Joe Rogan? Well, it was sort of done in jest yes. and all, but I would. I mean, I think it's good. I, I think Joe has to be exposed and we'll see. Look, with me, you know what you have. And we've done incredible deals with the, even Big Ten. I got Big Ten. No other president would have gotten involved in that as an example. There's no other president, Clay, that would have. You understand that. They would have. Can you imagine uh, Obama wouldn't have done it, just wouldn't have done it. And uh, just is not in the makeup and. I tell you, can you imagine Biden doing it? He's uh, he's a low energy person. I used to call Jeb Bush low energy, but uh, I mean, if you compare the two, Jeb is extraordinarily energetic compared to Sleepy Joe. So you know, I mean, Joe's not going to be doing that kind of stuff, and it's sort of fun because you know I have this platform, and it's it's sort of easy to do when you have. You, we have this great platform. You're president of the United States. We hear that football all over these incredible states and all of the people that are affected by it, everybody, even in the stands, the people that work the stands, everybody, so many people, so many jobs, so many everything. And you have this platform and you go out and you use it and you use it for good. But I don't think a lot of people would do that. And I think a lot of people, if they did it, they wouldn't know how to do it. I think you're right, and it's it's crazy to me that you get criticized for getting football back, right? I mean, like some of the media out there, they're upset yeah. because you got it back. Uh, and this goes to my mom. I mentioned my, my wife earlier, but she said, hey, uh, make sure you tell the president this for me. So she's a big supporter. Um, and, uh, and she said the other day, you know, if President Trump went out in a boat uh, and, uh, and, you know, somebody's hat blew off and he stepped out of the boat, walked on water and picked up the hat and brought it back to the, to the fisherman. Uh, the New York times front page would say, uh, that Trump can't swim. So, uh, you know, it's funny kind of the way sometimes the media plays, like you bring football back and people are mad about it. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I have the vaccine is way ahead of schedule and now I'm being criticized on the vaccine. Because they're petrified that the vaccine comes in, you know, before the election. And, and I view it differently. I view it like we're going to save lives. It's a, you know, I think it's going to be a great vaccine and we're going to save lives. We have many great companies really close and probably have it. And they're in tests right now. But I'm being criticized for bringing it back too fast. And, and one of the doctors said, you know, it's a crazy world politics. Everybody wanted to get a vaccine as fast as possible. President Trump gets it ready fast. And they're criticizing him, you know. It it's, is wild. Uh, Do you expect the vaccine to be ready before the election by late October, Halloween it could, time? It could be. Uh, it will be right there. I mean, it's right in that vicinity, either before or, a little, or just shortly after, which is years ahead of schedule. You know, if you look at uh, if you look at what was going on with vaccines, there was no chance. If you go back to another administration, and I'm not just talking about Obama. If you go back to another administration, Clay, there's no chance. that This would have been two, three, four years because I've energized the FDA and we're approving things faster and safely. It's all, it has to be 100% safe. But I've energized the FDA, which would have taken two, three years, and we're going to have something in a matter of weeks. But it's amazing. Be, this never t- happened until a few weeks ago when they started criticizing the whole concept of this vaccine only because I did it. If it wasn't me, if it was somebody else, they'd say, oh, this is unbelievable. The vaccine's going to be here so early. Uh, And it's people are very aware of what's going on. They see what's happening. This is all done by the Democrats. They're very upset that we've done such a good job with the vaccine. They're very upset that we've done such a great job with like the ventilators when you had no ventilators and all of a sudden we started producing them. You know, we've done a good job with the COVID. This was given to us by China. Shouldn't have happened. Should have never happened. They stopped it from coming into China, but they let it go to the world. The whole world is suffering because of it. It's a disgrace. But we've done a great job. But the new thing is the vaccine. And they're very, very, they're very angry. And you should, they should be happy because we're talking about saving a lot of lives. But that's the world of politics, Clay. One of the world of politics that's crazy to me, speaking of the way that the media has covered the coronavirus in general, um, is they have praised Andrew Cuomo, who statistically has the worst death rate in the world, President Trump. I mean, that's not right. that's 100 percent true. He's writing a book about what a good job he did. You look at other states, Florida, Arizona, Texas, Republican governors, they've all done far better from a per capita perspective. 
and you would think that those guys have done awful jobs. All that matters is the difference between Republican and Democrat. I look at it like it's a scoreboard. Like, let's use yeah. data and actually use it. Like, it's wild to me that Andrew Cuomo is considered to be, like, the greatest governor in the history of mankind. When you look at his record, it's it's awful. Yeah, he had a hard time. He had a hard time. And, uh, I mean, I could tell you the story. I know the story better than anybody. I won't say it, but I'll tell you, he, he definitely had a hard time. A lot of people died, unfortunately. And, uh, and one of the decisions, obviously, was the nursing home, which I think needs to get looked into. But that seems to be a huge part of this, uh, is a huge majority of the deaths uh, in many countries yeah. are coming out of nursing homes. And right. nearly 50 percent in the United States, and it's only 0.6 percent of the population. Right. We have uh, the nursing home. Look, it affects elderly people, especially if you have a heart problem or diabetes in particular, but other things, too. But it turned out that they're vulnerable. And young kids, if you have kids, I mean, it's incredible. Their immune system is stronger. Who would have thought? And the younger, the better. But they have statistics where a certain state had many thousands of deaths, thousands of deaths, and not one death under 18. Yeah. Think of it. Not one. No, my three kids are all back in school, which is why I've been arguing we need sports, we need people back at work, and and all three of my kids are back in-person schooling, and I think that's important. Good. Uh, Yeah, and thank you for helping to make that happen. Uh, Question for you, and this is a little bit interesting. I don't know uh, in the grand scheme of things. Kim Jong-un, there's been all sorts of questions about what's going on in North Korea, uh, and I'm curious what you think about his health. But also, word is that he is a big American sports fan, that he loved the Chicago Bulls, Dennis Rodman, Michael Jordan. Have you ever talked with Kim Jong-un about that? the the yes. 90s bulls and what did he say what kind of conversation did you well, guys have well he really does like dennis rodman i will tell you it's it's sort of great i always said dennis would be better than some of these stiffs that they used to send over to get to know him and uh, they'd send these people over and they uh, they went to harvard and they are uh, great students and great everything but they have no chemistry whatsoever he really did like dennis rodman dennis is a good guy too and i said uh we should maybe use him instead of uh, somebody that graduated number one at Harvard. Maybe we should use Dennis. I thought about that. But we have I have a very good relationship with him. He does love basketball, and he really does like Dennis. Uh, and so I always thought, like, man, if you could just bring him over here to go meet Michael Jordan, like, we might be able to get a, a, a great peace accord. Uh, that, yeah. that to be based on how much he loved the Bulls. Well, we've done well. We have a good relationship. And, frankly, nothing's happened. If uh, Hillary would have gotten in or – If you had a longer term Obama, you would have been in a war with them as sure as you're sitting there. And uh, you would have had a war that uh, would have been a really bad one. A lot of nuclear weapons, a lot of bad things would have happened. And uh, we're right now just, hey, whatever happened to that war, right? And I have a relationship. We'll see what happens. I mean, I'm not saying we did a great thing the other day with uh, Israel, with Israel and Bahrain, you saw in UAE, yes. and that's just the beginning. We have a lot of other countries that want to sign into that. You'll end up in peace in the Middle East, and people are – even the New York Times is giving that one rave reviews, which is shocking. They said Absolutely. if you move the, the embassy to Jerusalem, everything would fall apart. Yeah. Instead, it seems like it might, it might yeah. actually have helped in a major way, which is a that's counterintuitive. Right. Um, uh, last couple of questions for you here. Did you watch Tom Brady at all play with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I did. I watched, uh, but football's way down, uh, ratings-wise, yep. way down, because people are not going to stand for this stuff anymore where, where they're not respecting our flag and our national anthem. They're just not going to stand for it. Ratings were way down. I did watch Tom, and uh, I like Tom a lot, and uh, I think he'll be fine. It, it was, you know, I guess it was a break-in game. The other team's a good team, good quarterback, uh, and uh, it was an interesting game. What did you think? I don't, I, you know, I, I think the big debate, it's like a divorce, right? Belichick and, and Brady and which yeah. one's going to have a better post-divorce life. Right. And I liked the way that Cam played for the Patriots and Belichick. Right. And like, if you were buying stock in Belichick right now or in Brady right now for this season, which one do you think is the better buy? Well, they're friends of mine, but I will tell you this. He's some coach. He's a very yeah. good friend of mine and he's tough and he endorsed me. And, you know, he endorsed me the first time too. And he said, uh, he, I mean, you know, some people don't want to get involved, okay? They just don't. He doesn't care. He couldn't care less. He wants to do whatever's right. He's a tough guy. And uh, and he's just a great coach. He's. I, I remember when he said the, the field goal against Atlanta, go for the field goal. They were getting killed. They had a chance for a touchdown or a field goal. And he kicked the field goal and 
what was the score, like 27 to 3? 28 3, he, they were down, yeah. Yeah, and he kicks a field goal. And I said, geez, that's not a good decision. It tended up to be a perfect decision because they ended up what tied and then they ended up winning the game if he doesn't have that field goal. Now, maybe they would have made a touchdown. You know, who knows what happens. But there's a case where you would have said that's too conservative, right? And uh, But he is a great coach. I've watched him win games that other coaches just wouldn't win. But he's a great guy, too. No doubt. Last question for you. Does it seem as crazy to you as it does to many people in my audience that for high school football in particular, you've helped to get the Big Ten back. We may end up with Pac-12 playing Mountain West. Other conferences could be coming back. But if you look at the data in different states, for high school kids, whether they have a Democrat governor or a Republican governor, in many respects, seems to be deciding whether high school kids should be able yeah. to play football or sports in the fall in general. Yeah. Shouldn't kids be able to play sports regardless of whether the governor is a Democrat or a Republican? Well, it's too bad it has to be that way. But if you look at these states with high crime, they're run by Democrats. You look at the cities with high crime, they're run by Democrats. And the Democrats, I'll tell you what, they're philosophies are not working too well. And certainly their philosophies on law and order are working very badly. You look at all of the places that have problems. Uh, uh, you know, Portland, look at that. It's run by these radical left Democrats. It's a disaster. We go in, I could fix that up in a half an hour. We'll send in the National Guard. They have to ask us. It has to be requested. But But all of these places are run by liberal Democrats. And so, I don't know, it's sort of, it should be easy. We're going to find out whether or not people agree with me. Last question. Did you tell my producer, Danny G, that he deserved a raise when you called last time? Absolutely. I said, you got the president. But you really do. You have a, a great show, and he's a nice guy. But I said, you got the president on the phone. You deserve a raise. I haven't done too many of these calls lately. Uh, I appreciate it, sir. We'd love to have you back on anytime you want to come on. Keep doing good work, and thanks well, for thank the work you, you did for the Big Ten. Thank you very much, Clay. Everyone have a good time. Thank you. That is the President of the United States, Donald Trump.